All right, it is still day one of Gen Con here in Indianapolis 2022. Rory and I are about to head down to the Steamforge Games booth to hear all about the Epic Encounter series, Rivet Wars, Animal Adventures, and see what else I have going on. But as we go down there, let me remind you that we are in the final days of the Humblewood Tales Kickstarter from our sponsor, Hit Point Press. This more than 200 page 5e setting and adventure book expands the lore around the central tree city of Alderheart and gives you at least six more adventures to run, encounter pirate mercenaries, face off against a slime king, search for creatures of legend, investigate rumors of a young Jerbeen who seems to have developed magical powers, and take on the Amaranthine Kren in a nightmarish dreamscape. And there's a new mini set, a vinyl soundtrack, and more. Humble with Tales is available as a book, box set, and a Kickstarter exclusive collector's edition. Check it out at the link in the corner of the screen in the doohickey down below or at gg.humblewoodtales.com. That is Humblewood Tales by Hit Point Press. Of course, at Gen Con Day 1, we have to come by the Steamforge Game Booth. And two of our favorite people are here, Rush Charles, hey. Richard August, the superstars of Epic Encounters and so many more things. How's your con going so far? It's been awesome so far, thanks. Fantastic. First ever Gen Con, so I'm so excited to be here. How is it compared to the other cons you've been to? I mean, it's a special, it's a very special something about Gen Con, isn't it? It's not quite, nothing's quite like it. It's amazing. Did you uh, witness the stampede in the morning when they opened up the, d the gates here? I unfortunately missed it due to still finishing off the stand with a few little extra last minute bits. So I, at least I, you know, survived. That's good, yeah. It's, surviving the stampede is the first step of Gen Con. This is only our second Gen Con. It's the first one we've worked as a Gallant Goblin. So it's been a hot minute since we've been here. But what are you most excited about for Steamforge here at the con? Oh man, we've got so much going on. I mean, I'm really pleased to have all of our Epic Encounter stuff here. I know, I know how much you guys love that stuff. Um, we've got all the faraway sea miniatures on display. This is the first time they've been out in public and they're all the beautiful pro painted ones that we had. So that's fantastic. And uh, I'm currently working on, uh, we've got a new game coming soon, which is a, a refresh of a game from a few years ago, which was really popular called Rivet Wars. Uh, and I'm currently working on the new faction for that game, so I'm currently sculpting little crazy science potato people who are, uh, they're looking pretty awesome. I'm really, really happy with them. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and this game is a little bit f away from like an RPG. And so tell us a little bit about it here. So it's, um, it's kind of like a board gamified war game with a really kind of light-hearted, fun, family-friendly tone. The miniatures have this almost chibi, almost cartoony quality to them. Um, there's a sort of faction called the Blight who have a slightly kind of imperialistic feel. There's a more sort of ragtag allies group that battles against them. And then our third faction that we're introducing, the Namoans, are a sort of crazy Jules Verne inspired, tunnel up from below, Captain Nemo steampunk faction, which is pretty wild. And uh, the whole game is kind of intended to play out in a series of individual games. There's a campaign structure. And one of the things that's really cute is all of the vehicles and all of the heroes are all little plug and socket so you, you can jump your characters from vehicle to vehicle and swap things around and we're, we're developing new rules new campaign structures new missions it's basically just taking it and as we are want to do dialing it up to 11. That's awesome and we're going to get a closer look at that in a couple of days here I think we're going to meet with the co-founders of Steamforge Games here on Sunday and talk a little bit about River Wars. Let me ask you a little bit about Epic Encounters you got two new boxes coming down the line so Richard, every time you come out with a new box, you try to take a new approach to like making this one a little bit special, a little bit different. Like maybe one is like an arena fight. One is, you know, just kind of a different style of adventure. What is the next set going to bring us? So this one is very heavily sea based. So there is, uh, I mean, without wanting to give this a little fishing village. So you're moving along on platforms above water, which obviously gives a lot of opportunities for things that can jump out or drag you in. Uh, the miniatures are fantastic. They're, they're, we're calling them the, the Karkinos, um, but they're, they're basically crab folk, crab kin, um, and they are particularly nasty, particularly well armoured, and surprisingly fast. So they, there is one particularly good one which he kind of they, they have crabs that they set on you and throw you at, throw at you, which is cool. Um, then there's the dragon turtle. He's in a cove where basically he can disappear and reappear at will. Uh, which makes him extremely dangerous and there's a lot of destructible terrain around which means that you are really really even by epic encounters standards unsafe you're not you're not going to be able to you know just tur 
if you'll forgive the pun, turtle into one corner and pick him off slowly and he's, he's going to come at you and he's going to come at you hard. I feel like Epic Encounters and these boxes have been maybe the biggest splash in the mini D&D scene in quite a while. Like, they hit the market and like this is just what people need. It's something to pull off the shelf that they can run, teaches them how to be a better game master, saves them time for setup and preparation. You have everything you need right in the box. How has the reaction been? Is it surprising to you on how popular these have been? Um, I, I, I think we're really grateful with that people have... Um, people have liked the concept so much I think you've been a big part of that because you kind of just got it straight away um, and, and I think that's really helped so thank you um, we did actually just yeah they have been really popular this morning uh, one person bought uh, one of every single epic encounter which was amazing and was was quite uh, daunting really to see the amount of stuff we put out it could it, it is taller than me it is it's a huge huge pile of stuff um, and yeah uh, we just we just want to keep taking them in a new direction keep pushing the i think the limits of what that combat engine can do and make it interesting and exciting for people well, you've done such a great job with them and each one really does bring something unique which i think it must be getting harder and harder the more boxes you have to have to come up with new new factions new approaches to gameplay uh, you must have so many lined up coming down the pike. I, I might have heard back in the, uh, uh, Gary Con a couple of ones coming down. I don't know if I'm allowed to say any of them, um, but you have quite a few still planned out, yeah? We, we do indeed, and including some of the, the real classic archetypal D&D um, favorites, I think it's fair to say, uh, including what I hope is a really interesting take on uh, one of the, the most cliched I don't want to say um, it, it, there's been a lot of discussion around how to make this particular um, species interesting I think we've done it and I think that the models are going I mean the, the, they're just gonna be next level they really are you got me curious I wonder if it's what I think it is but I will have to come back and revisit that later on. I think this might be a good time to announce, too, something that we, I don't even know if you two are necessarily aware of this, that we have coming on down the pike. Uh, we are about to launch, pretty soon, stay tuned, a painting contest for Epic Encounter Minis, uh, teaming up with Steamforge Games. And I just wanted to do you have advice for our folks choosing minis, painting minis? You're the expert. Like, uh, maybe people who haven't ever painted before, how to get started, what's a good, uh, what advice do you have to give them? Well, I think that at the moment, compared to when I, I started painting minis decades ago, uh, too, too long to think about. And I think that we're in a time now where getting started into the miniatures painting hobby has never been easier. You know, the quality of the models, the amount of advice that you can find online and the, the products that are out there to make painting easy. You know, Army Painter, uh, Games Workshop, um, uh, Green Stuff World. These are like just three companies that make products that are designed to get paint on models quickly with the contrast range and the instant ink and the instant impact shades. So my advice to anyone getting started is get yourself some minis that you really feel inspired by because I think that... Uh, if, you, if you're approaching it with passion and you're really excited by something, you, you want to try that a little bit harder. And then the other thing is, you know, like any skill, it's going to take time to acquire. So give yourself permission to make mistakes. Give yourself permission to enjoy the process of learning. People ask me, like, what do I think when people paint their models? And like, do I like better painted models or less better painted models? I just like the idea that someone is inspired to invest their time and their energy in doing that from a model that I've produced. So I think any attempt to paint a model is a fantastic thing. And I, I, I think it's worth celebrating whatever stage of that journey people are at. I think you come to events like this and you see the beautifully painted models like you have up front over here. And it can be a little intimidating, but it's surprisingly easy to paint a mini that's table ready. That you look at, you're not most holding them right up to your eye most of the time. You're down on the table to have a good time. And it's not that tough to pick it up and do a, a pretty good job on it. The first few minis, I am not an artistic person. I, uh, you can ask every art teacher I've ever had, um, but I can put personality into them. Richard, do you pay much? Uh, no, my, my only advice would be to uh, tell Russ that he has to paint something for you as a part of work and then just use that. That's what I do. All right, you heard it here first. Uh, if you want to share your email address, no. <laughs> 
Also, I just want to thank you again. Uh, last year, our, our kitty Fiddle was going through a hard uh, health crisis, and uh, you put together a really beautiful little mini of him as a little bard, and it's some one of the most precious things we own now. So I just wanted to thank you for doing that for us. Um, it was such a kind gesture, and so just to be able to meet you in person and be able to thank you for that. Um, Thank you. It was my absolute pleasure to do. And uh, again, I, I would echo what Richard said. I like thank you for all the support that you've you've shown us and the Epic Encounters range, and for my my personal most beloved pet project, Animal Adventures. So, I hope you guys have a fantastic convention, and we'll speak again soon. Yeah. Thank you very much, and we'll have more Steamforce coverage coming up soon. Hope to see y'all soon.